Once we have installed all the required softwares and dependencies which we need to start working on the project, next we are going to create a Node.js and Express project for the backend development. We will start with backend development first where we are going to create APIs and define routes for different functionalities of the real-time chat application which we are going to create like the user login and sign up, starting a chat, getting chat messages, logout, etc. Once the API development in the backend is complete, we will move to frontend development and there we will create a beautiful user interface using React library. I want to proceed in this way because I don't want to switch between frontend and backend development every time we add a new functionality in our application. So first we are going to create all the required APIs and test it using Postman. Once all the APIs are working according to our need, after that we will start frontend development. So in this lecture, we are going to create a simple Node.js project and we will install the required packages like Express. For that, let's go to desktop. And on the desktop, I'm going to create a new project folder. And we are going to call our chat application as Quick Chat. And that's why I'm naming this folder as Quick Chat. Inside this folder, we are going to create a project folder for both frontend as well as backend. So here I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder server and inside this folder we are going to have all the files and folders related to our backend project. And in the same way I'm also going to create another folder. I'll call it as client and inside this folder we are going to have all the files and folders related to our frontend development. Next. I'm going to open this server folder using Visual Studio Code and inside this server folder we are going to write our backend code. So let's open Visual Studio Code. Let's close this tab. Let's also close this welcome tab and let's go to file. Click on open folder. Let's go to desktop where we have created our project folder. There we have this quick chat folder. Let's go inside that folder. And in there, we are going to open this server folder because inside this server folder, we are going to write our backend code. All right, now currently this server folder is empty. And since inside this server folder, we are going to write our backend code using Node.js, every Node.js project must have a package.json file. So package.json file is the file which contains the information or you can say the metadata about the Node.js project. And to create the package.json file inside the server folder, here I'm going to open VS Code built-in terminal. There, let's select command prompt. Let's close this PowerShell tab. Let me clear this terminal by typing CLS. And in order to generate a package.json file for a Node.js project, we have to type npm init command and we have to run this command. When I press enter, it is going to ask us few questions. For example, what should be the package name? I am going to call this package as quick hyphen chat. You can name your package anything. Here, since our application name is going to be quick chat, I am calling it as quick hyphen chat. And let me also include server here. Because in the front end also, when we are going to create our React application, there also we will have a package.json file. And there we are going to call that package.json file. We are going to name that package.json file as quick chat client. Here for our backend development, I am calling that package.json file as quick chat server. Let's press enter. Then we also need to specify a version for our application. Since we are just starting on developing this Node.js application, I am going to keep the version as 1.0.0. Then we can also specify a description for our application. Here I'm simply going to say real time chat application. But if you want, you can also keep it as empty. Then we also need to specify an entry point for our Node.js application. For now, I'm going to call it as app.js. Let's again press enter. Then if you want, you can also add some test commands, but I'm going to keep it as blank. Then git repository also, I'm going to keep it as blank. Then if you want, you can also specify some keywords, but I'm going to keep it as blank. And in the author, I'll put my name. 
let's press enter then for the license i'm going to keep the default value which is isc and now you can see here this terminal is showing us how the package.json file will look like so there we will have these properties with these values so it is just confirming whether we are okay with this file content or not in this case i'm okay with this file content so i'll simply type y and i'll press enter and what it will do is it will create a package.json file as you can see here and in that package.json file you will see those properties we have a name a version the description for our application the entry point for our application in this case it is app.js we have some test scripts we have author and we have license okay so the package.json file for our node.js application is created now the next thing which we are going to do is we are going to install express for our node.js application express is a framework which uses node.js behind the scenes and it makes working with node.js easier by providing some reusable classes and methods so let me go ahead and let me clear the terminal here and in order to install express for this project we are going to use npm install command and we want to install express package for this project if i press enter this command is going to install express package for this project and once the express package is installed you will see that in the package.json file one new property called dependencies has been added and in that that package is listed so here the express version 4.19.2 has been installed for this project let me go ahead and let me clear the terminal again now once express is installed for this project now what we can do is we can write some express code for that inside this server folder i am going to create a new file i am going to call it as app.js which is going to be the entry point for this project so in the package.json file we have specified that the entry point for this project is app.js so we have created that app.js file in there we are going to write some express code and in order to write some express code first of all we need to import express in this app.js file and in node.js if you want to import a package or a file you use require method and to this require method you pass the package name or the file path as a string value here we want to use express package so i'm going to specify the package name which is express and what this is going to do is this line here it is going to return us a method a function and we want to assign that function to a variable for that let's create a variable and let's simply call it as express okay so this line here it is going to return us a method and that method we are assigning to this express variable next we are going to call that method so to call a method we will simply use a set of parentheses after this express and what this will do is it will return us an object and we are going to store that object into a variable and let's call it as app so this express when we are calling it as a method it is going to return us an object we are assigning that object to this app variable now this object which is stored in this app variable it is going to have some properties and methods which we can use in order to create a backend application and the method which we are going to use here is listen method so on this app object we are going to have a listen method and what this listen method does is it makes our node.js application ready for listening to incoming requests now when we are calling this listen method here we need to pass two arguments the first argument should be the port number on which we want to listen to incoming requests so what i will do is i'll also create another variable i'll call it as port and to that i'm going to assign the port number as 3000 and i'm going to pass this port as the first argument then the second argument will be a callback function and this callback function will be executed whenever our node.js application is ready for handling any incoming request okay so when our node.js application will start running and when it is ready for listening to incoming requests at that time this callback function will be executed and for now inside this callback function let's simply go ahead and let's write a console.log statement and there let's write a message listening to requests on port 
and then let's specify the port number using this port variable and this is it let's save this file and now all we have to do is we have to run this node.js application now before we run this node.js application we are going to install one more package called nodemon and we need nodemon to automatically compile and rerun our node application whenever we make some changes to it so here i'm going to install another package for that we are going to use npm install or npm i command and we want to install nodemon package and we want to install it as a dev dependency and to install a package as a dev dependency we need to use hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev now dev dependency simply means that the functionality of our application does not depend on that package a dev dependency is that dependency which we need for speed up our development process the working and the functionality of our application does not depend on that dependency so in this case we need this nodemon package because what we want is whenever we are going to make some changes in our application code and whenever we save it we want nodemon to automatically recompile our node.js application and rerun it so this nodemon package does not have to do anything with the functionality of our application okay so let's press enter here in order to install this nodemon package and if i go to package.json file you will notice that in this package.json file another property called dev dependencies has been added and in that dev dependencies this nodemon package is listed because this nodemon is the development dependency for our application okay all right so once this nodemon package is installed let me go ahead and let me clear the terminal and what i'm going to do is i'm going to open command prompt for that i'll type cmd in the search bar it will open command prompt let me clear command prompt here and now what i want is i want to go to our server folder where we are writing our backend code so here we have our server folder inside which we are writing our backend code let me copy the path of this server folder and using the cd command let's move to that folder and once we are in that folder now we can run this npx command so here we can say npx nodemon and then we will specify the file which we want to execute using this npx nodemon command so we can say app.js because we want to execute this app.js file and what this will do is it will compile our node.js project it will execute and run it and whenever it will find some changes in our project in the code and when that change is saved this nodemon package is again going to recompile it automatically and rerun it so we will not have to do that manually let's go ahead and let's run this command by pressing enter so our application has been compiled and now it is running and since the application is running that's why you are seeing this message listening to request on port 3000 because when our application has started this callback function has been executed and when this callback function has been executed it has logged that message in the terminal okay so now our application our node.js application is ready for handling any type of request currently in our node.js application we are not handling any request but our server is ready and our server our application is running on port number 3000 so if i go to the browser and there if we type localhost port number 3000 and if we press enter you will see that we don't have any error so here we do not see the message that the web page cannot be found instead we can see this text cannot get that's because we have not created any route in our node.js application which is going to handle a get request on this root url that we are going to do in our coming lectures but as you can see at localhost port number 3000 the node.js application is running and it is listening for any incoming requests so in this way our node.js application is up and running now before i wrap up this lecture what i'm also going to do is for writing this server code which is responsible for starting our node.js server and listening for requests 
I'm going to move this code in a separate file. So in this server folder, I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call it as server.js. And inside this server.js file, I'm going to copy this code. I'll cut it from here. And let's put it inside that server.js file. Now, in order to use this app object, this app object is not present in this file. We have created this app object inside this app.js file. So if you want to use this app object inside this server.js file, what we will do is from this app.js, we will export this app object and we will import that app object in this server.js. And to export this app object, we are going to use module.exports. And to that, we are going to assign this app object. Let's save this file. And now in the server.js, we are going to import that app object. And for that, again, in Node.js, if you want to import something, we use require function. And to that require function, in this case, we need to specify the path of app.js from where we are exporting this app object. And since this server.js and this app.js are present in the same folder, we can use the relative path here. So we can say dot slash, and then we can use the name of the app.js file, which is app. So here we don't need to specify .js extension. And this is going to return us this app object because that's what we are exporting from here. So let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable. And here also, let's call it as app. And with that, now that app object is also available in this server.js file. So again, let's save the changes. And now the entry point of our application will be server.js file. Now the entry point is not app.js, now it is server.js because in the server.js file, we are writing the logic for starting our Node.js server and listening to requests. So let's go to command prompt again. Let's stop this process by pressing Ctrl C and let's type Y. Let's clear everything by typing CLS and let's run that npx nodemon command again. But this time, instead of running app.js, now we are going to run server.js because now server.js is the entry point of our Node.js application. Let's press enter. And as you can see, the application has been compiled and we can see this message listening to request on port 3000. So now our Node.js application is again up and running and it is listening for requests on port number 3000. All right, so in this way, we have created an express application and this application is listening for incoming requests on port number 3000. Now, in the next lecture, we are going to create a configuration file. In that configuration file, we are going to specify some environment variables and we will learn how we can use those environment variables in our Node.js application.